Strategy number one, discover your purpose. Very important. Understand the brutal facts of self-examination and adjusting your life to these principles. Strategy number two, very important, accept personal responsibility. Quit blaming your choices on somebody else. You are responsible for your own growth. Nobody can do it for you. Even God will not change your life without your cooperation. But the good news is, you have the power to choose your attitude and your actions. You may fall victim to unfortunate circumstances. But you are responsible how you respond to them. You cannot control what happens to you. But you can control what you become. And if you're going to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ, you have to rise above the adversity. You have to master your mind. That means you got to get control of your thoughts. You got to eliminate negative self-talk. You got to choose good companions. And this is very important. Run from self-pity. You have to lead yourself. And your own appetites will lead you astray. So hold yourself to a higher standard. And we have this responsibility. And so you've got to motivate yourself. And it has to come from within. John Maxwell says, the best motivation is self-motivation. If you, if you wait for somebody to do something around you, you're always going to be a slave to that circumstance. You'll be a slave to your atmosphere. And God never intended for the wilderness journey of Israel to dictate to Israel their identity. People who need other sources to motivate them are only interested in doing the minimum and not the maximum. And I'm not interested in doing the minimum. I don't want to know how little I can get by with. I want to know how much can I do. Because you were made for more. And so therefore you've got to understand your vision and understand your purpose. So if you're self-motivated, you accept full responsibility for your purpose. And what happens to you doesn't have to dictate what you become. Everybody here that's used of God 
Svako ovdje ko je korišćen od Boga. Has had to overcome some bad stuff. Je morao da prevaziđe neke loše stvari. To be who they are today. Da postane to što jeste. Their wrong choices. Njihovi je loši izbori. Or the wrong choices of others. Ili loši izbori drugih. Did not dictate to them. Nisu diktirali. Who they would become. Šta će oni postati. But they decided. Ali oni su odlučili. I'm going to accept responsibility. Ja ću preuzeti odgovornost. I can't happen to me. I can't control what happened to me. Ne kontrolišem šta šta će se dogoditi. When I was a child. Dok sam bio dete. But I can respond now. Ali sada mogu da odgovorim. In a right way. Na pravi način. To become more. Da bi postao više. Than I've ever been before. Od ovog odnosa nisam nikad bio. And how many of you know you? Koliko od vas zna vi We're made for more. ste stvorili za više. Hvala ste se poboljšali u vašem poboljšanju. Želim da moja žena dođe sada. Želim da ona govori. I želim da ona služi vašem srdu. I želim da ona služi. Of how these principles have changed her, and helped her in her journey. Isn't she beautiful? to be with you. And I thank Brother and Sister Tier for your amazing hospitality. Brother Vlad here and your family. Thank you for putting this together. First class. And so nice to uh, meet Brother and Sister Kraft. Who I've heard of much about all good. Čuli smo mnogo dobro vama iz svega dobro. I to je, ovo je čast koji ne dobijem tako često. I to je da putujem sa mojim omiljenim propovednikom. Ponekad možemo da dođemo na ovakve seminare. I meni se desilo kao ženi i mladoj osobi da mislim da ovo nije za mene. Ja sam samo mala dama koja je beznačajna. The Lord showed me a scripture in Psalm 139, which has become my favorite chapter in the Bible. And it says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That's right. I am wonderful. You are wonderful. You need to look at your neighbor and say, You are wonderful. Whether you're young or old, whether you're male or female, you are equipped for the task. You were made for more. So, but even though we are equipped, we still have to work for it. Uh, you might have all the tools of a carpenter. Carpenter builds with wood, the hammer, the saw. But the, the tools just sitting there by themselves won't build furniture. So I can't be hide behind being a woman. I can't, I can't hide or excuse myself. Or because I'm a young person, I've got to pick up the tools and use them every day. 
Ti morate, ja moram da uzmem to oruđe i da radim sa njim. Every single day, like he said last night. Kao što je moj muž neko sjeti. That's right. And you know, sometimes I think that God gets tired of hearing the same prayer every day. Ove kad mislim da je Bog već dosadila ta ista molitva svaki dan. I'm knocking with the same prayer every day. Svaki dan idem i kucam sa isto molitvo. But God isn't like us. Ali Bog nije kao mi. He does not get tired of hearing our prayers. On se ne umori od naših molitva. That's a mind game of the enemy. To je samo igra ne prije. We get weary, but God is not. Mi se menjamo i umaramo, ali Bog ne. And we have to remember Daniel, he prayed for 21 days. I moramo da se setimo Danijela koji je molio 21 dana. And then the angel came with his answer. A onda je anđel došao sa odgovorom. And he said, I heard you the first day you prayed. I rekao je, čuo sam te prvi put kad si molio. But the prince of the air fought me. Ali princ koji je u vazduhu, ti džavovi koji su tamo su se boljeli sa mnom. There was a battle in heaven. U nebu je bila borba. To bring Daniel his answer. Da bi Daniel dobio svoj odgovor. And if he had stopped praying, his answer might not have gotten through. I kad bi on stao sa tim molitvama, odgovor ne bi došao. So how many prayers are sitting on the shelf? Tako da koliko molitava sedi na polici. Because we stopped. Jer smo mi prestali. We got discouraged and we didn't keep up our rule of five every single day. Obeskrabili smo se i nismo ispoštovali svoje predostruku pravila. So don't stop. Don't say I've I've heard this before. I've been inspired before. And it has it hasn't worked. Keep knocking. Keep doing your work every single day. Because today might be your day. And when you wake up tomorrow, it's still today. Every day might be the day. So expect your blessing. Expect your answer. Svaki dan može da bude vaš dan, tako da očekujte vaš odgovor, očekujte vaš blagoslov. And we have to say yes every single day. And I think Brother Kraft said it when he expects good reports, he expects the increase. And then my husband has given the, the amen. I mislim da je Brad Kraft rekao da kad čeka izvešte, uvijek čeka da to budu dobre stvari. Moj muž je rekao amen. We're creating power here. Mi stvaramo moć. And I bless you with increase. I ja vas pogosinjam sa... Hvala što. Now, sada, how many of you wrote down your rule of five yesterday. How many of you wrote it down? Now how many of you got up today and you have done at least three of those five? Two of the five. <laughs> One of the five. None of the five. None of the five yet. Okay, how many of you done five of the five? Four of the five. All right, we got four out of five people in the house. So I urge you, pick up this good habit. It will change your life. And if you'll set your path, You'll discover your destiny. If you don't have direction, you're burning up energy that can never be replaced by an external force. So therefore, you've got to take the right actions. You've got to set the path. And you got to do your rule of five. Because change does not happen automatically. 
And you got to cooperate with God to grow. That means you need self-discipline. You know what that means? You have to do the work. I can't do your work for you. You have to work. You have to have the responsibility to pray and to seek the Lord. So I want to give you several responsibilities that you have as a leader. And you have to accept your responsibility to pray. If you only pray when you're in trouble, you're not really praying. You need to pray when you're not in trouble. You got to pray kingdom prayers. Your rule of five is your daily private devotion with God. And it is essential to a productive walk with God. You have a responsibility to read and study God's Word. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. <laughs> That's your responsibility. I can't read the Bible for you. I can't pray for you. I can't worship for you. You have to do that. You have a responsibility to fast. That means not eat. It's imperative in your walk with God because of spiritual warfare and the devils that fight you. And some of them can't be defeated unless you fast. And that's right out of the mouth of Jesus. You will never beat them until you pray and fast. You have a responsibility to attend church. That means you must come to church. And when you get to church, you need to be at church. Not on the back row waiting for it to get over. So you can go eat a hamburger at McDonald's. <laughs> You got to be at church because that's where you can minister to people. That's where you can have an impact on others. You also have a responsibility to be a witness. That means tell others about Jesus. Invite them to church. And you have to accept that as your responsibility. And self-multiplication is when you teach others, you grow faster. Share it with other people. So if you will do that, God will use you mightily. So I try to share the gospel with somebody every day. And so it's very important that you do the same. Because you are going to grow. Because I can sit your hunger. Now how many of you are going to wake up tomorrow? and do your rule of five. Would you lift your hand and make that commitment? Are you going to do it with passion? Are you going to be mad at me? Because I asked you to do it. And say, that preacher from America has got me into this. But it's exciting. It's life transforming. It will be a blessing. 
And so it's important Is that, that you do this. That I do. Now, let me share with you strategy number three. Very important. Everybody wants to wear the crown, but nobody wants to drink the cup. So you got to take spiritual authority. That's strategy number three. Now there's never been a church service that I have ever walked into where there is not resistance. So the Jewish people call it this. The Yetzer Har. I'll just, that's Hebrew. And what it means that there's a natural resistance in all of life <laughs> that if you want to move forward there is always something that will push you back. So if I want to move forward and he's going to push me back because he's the Yetzer Hara. And I've got to fight this to break through to get past it because if I do what happens is, is the Yetzer Hara doesn't have intelligence. <laughs> it's just there. So if I get past it, the very thing that was pushing against me now pushes me forward. And that is what spiritual authority is all about. You can feel it in the atmosphere now. Even though we have a natural language barrier. And that's a natural resistance to communication and understanding. But it makes no difference because we've overcome the Yetzirah. And instead of pushing against us now, I have broken free and now it pushes us forward. There's power in this place right now. There's Holy Ghost in this house right now. And your victory is just one decision away. You got to take up your cross. What does that mean? It means you choose your path. It's a chosen path. So you got to pray with authority. Quit praying about stuff and start speaking to it. So in my prayer, I don't preach, I don't pray about the service. Oh God help me. Oh God move. Oh God bless. And act like God can't do it. I speak in the name of Jesus. I take authority over the prince of the power of the air. And I say, Lord, manifest your glory. Manifest your power. And enable these people to become effective in their to overcome personal habits and to improve in every area. It's going to happen in Jesus' name. Amen. One writer said, I got to fight my own laziness. And how many of you know we can get real lazy about spiritual stuff. I'm too tired. Somebody looked at me wrong. Brother Jerry didn't shake my hand. 
He didn't, he didn't look at me right. So I think I'll sit on the back row. Now I'm not talking about all y'all on the back row. There's really no other place for y'all to sit. Okay, all right. You're all right. You're all right. So I'm just talk, I'm just talking to, you know about those that choose the back row. And, and you got to get out of that. None of us have a right to be too tired. The last time I checked the book, the Bible says that this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. This is the refreshing. This, this is the refreshing. That is your cue to say, man. <laughs> this is your rest. This is the glory of the Lord. So you got to lift yourself above your own tiredness. I have to do it all the time. Because I preach to a lot of tired people. <laughs> and I preach to bored people. I'm bored. Big deal. <laughs> it's like I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to lift you to a new level. <laughs> Where you walk in excited. <laughs> You walk in on fire. You walk in ready to take on the devil. And you know you're going to win. The devil cannot win. It is impossible for him to win. If somebody would take authority in Jesus' name, God would deliver you. God, uh, be, uh, so and you would walk forward in power and in victory. Yeah. 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 Amen. Woo! Hallelujah! Amen. I'm here to pour energy into you. Yeah. 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 Somebody don't look like you've been energized in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you know those little those things you gotta wind up to watch them walk? Anybody ever had one of those toys where you had to wind it up? Some of y'all could use some winding up. Just wind. Get you, get you running in the right direction. This is your church. This is your mission. This is your purpose. God has called you. My wife said it. You are wonderful. God doesn't choose junk. God doesn't save junk. God saves awesome people. Calvary proves to you your worth and value. That's how valuable you are. That's how important you are. And he's poured his life into you. He's given you his name. He's given you his riches. You are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And take authority in the name of Jesus. And the devil will be defeated. But you don't have to cower in the corner. Like he's got the control of the upper hand. Jesus defeated him once and for all. And the cross has given us the victory. And you need to rise above your circumstance and give glory to the Almighty God. And He picked you out of all the peoples of the earth to become a child of the King. Do you realize you are royalty? I said you are royalty. Hallelujah. For you are sons and daughters of the king. 
esiste uh, sinomi di cerchio di Boga. Boca. And you possess his authority in the earth. And you need to walk in that authority. But take dominion over yourself first. Get control of yourself first. That means control your own spirit. Control your anger. Control your moodiness. Some of you are too moody. We never know who we're going to meet. <laughs> When we say, Brother Kinsey, I'm not a morning person. I can dig it. But I meet you at noon time and you're not a noon person either. <laughs> and then I meet you in the evening time and you still haven't become a person yet. <laughs> I probably won't ever meet you at midnight, ain't no telling what you do. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You need to wake up with some excitement in your spirit. If you wake up and can get up on your own, you're blessed. I said, if you wake up and you can get up on your own, you're blessed. You are a blessed people. You are an anointed people. You were made for more. Now take authority in the name of Jesus. Don't just let the devil run all over you. So there's five levels of spiritual authority. And the first level is, is you've got to be called. And if you are called, then you have an anointing. How many of you know you're called? How many of you know you're called? You say, well, I, I, I haven't heard it. The Bible says he's called all of us to salvation. Are you saved? You're called. <coughs> salvation equals call. Call. If you respond in faith, of course. And in obedience. You will be saved. Now, some people don't heed the call. They don't believe in the call. Or they don't obey the call. But how many of you have been called? Then I want you to lift your hand and say, I'm called. That's the first level of spiritual authority. And so therefore, the devil has no authority over you. I said no authority over you. So you've got to understand your calling. Second is your purpose. Again, we come back to this word purpose. Because it's vital to you being made for more. And if you've got a reason to take authority, God will allow you to have that authority. But you got to have a reason for it. And that's your purpose. Your purpose is your reason. I'm here to see you go to the, to the next level. So I didn't come in here praying about this service. I came here speaking in the name of Jesus. That you will receive this word. And it's going to lift you to the next level. And the opposition is going to get moved out of the way. I said the opposition is about to get moved out of the way. God's going to work some miracles in your life. And you're going to become exactly what the Holy Ghost wants you to be. And so you need to accept your purpose. Now we all have limitations. 
Only Jesus had the Holy Ghost without measure. <coughs> and only Jesus has all power in heaven and in earth. <coughs> I don't have the Holy Ghost without measure. <coughs> I only have it in measure. <coughs> I got the same amount of Holy Ghost you've got. <coughs> but it's only in measure. Jesus had it without measure. I only have power in measure. He has power without measure. And God will never share his omnipotence with anybody. That, that keeps you dependent on him. Yes. And never looking to yourself. You always know that if he don't take up the slack, you're in trouble. <laughs> but if he shows up, there is no devil that can stop him. I just put my foot down. I just take authority. And pray he shows up. <laughs> because my power will only go so far. But his power is unlimited. And you have to understand that. Or you'll get yourself into trouble. And then you'll get discouraged. And you will not understand the balance that you've got to have in order to operate in the spirit. And take authority. That's the reason why I never stopped worshiping. I've never stopped saying amen. I've never stopped saying da. Why? Because I know I need Jesus right now to do what I have purpose to do. In my life. Because I'm called to do this. I'm called to to share with you these principles. I'm anointed to do that. So I have authority because that's my purpose. And I'm gifted enough to be able to communicate. So you can receive it. So you can understand it. And now I want to see you do the same thing. Because I'm not unique. I'm just one among many. And I want to see every one of you take authority in the name of Jesus. Because you need to understand your gifting. This brother is very gifted in worship. He can sing. And he can lift us all into the presence of the Lord. I don't even have to know the words. I can't even pronounce the words. And so I'm just singing. I don't even know what I'm singing. But I'm singing to Jesus. And you don't want to hear it anyway. Even if I didn't know the words. Because that's not my gifting. But I connect with his gift. And it lifts me into the presence of the Lord. And really all I need is Jesus. And y'all better watch out. I haven't really acted apostolic just yet. Y'all get to y'all get to saying yeah. And amen. I'm liable to start acting apostolic. I can't help it. It's just in my blood. I just love Jesus. And I want everybody to get this. So you can start operating. And become what God wants you to be. And take authority over the adversity. And let God show you how to do it. Because he will do it. So you've got to have the right gifting. <coughs> you've got to have a sense of divine destiny. But you've got to have the right character. You cannot operate in spiritual authority unless you are morally correct.
Ne, ne možete da radite u duhovnom svetu ako niste moralno čisti. You gotta have the right character. Morate da imate ispravan karakter. And you have got to live for God in holiness. Morate da živite za Boga u svetosti. Or the devil will run right slap over you. And he will devour you. Your character will not save you. But it will protect you. From the devourer. Only Jesus can save you. Only Jesus can deliver you. But your character can protect you. From the devourer. And you need that protection. So if you aren't going to live for God, and you're not going to do this right, don't step out here and do what I'm telling you to do. You will get run over. Remember the seven sons of Sceva. The, the demon said this. Paul I know, Paul zna. and Jesus I know, Jesus zna. but who are you? Ali ste Because you have no identity Jer vi if you do not live in character. Ako ne u tom and so you got to have character. I zato imati do you understand? Da li you got to make the choice. Morate and you got to live for God. Okay, I'm done for this session and then I'll pick up here at Spiritual Authority in the next session. And this is the longer one.